video I'm going to show you how to find the orthologs of a gene. So in this scenario we already have one gene that's in E. coli MG1655. So we know about this one. This is its CDS sequence. This is the pre-sequence which is just the 200 base pairs or so upstream of the CDS. That is its post-sequence, so the 200 base pairs after the CDS. And this is the accession number from which I got the data. So it does have the DXS pathway. This is the DXS protein. And then we've got a bunch of other organisms. And we're trying to figure out whether they have the same enzyme, so the same functionality, but a different sequence within their genome. Uh, and we want to find the flanking sequence of that so we can pull out the ribosome binding site. And sometimes you need to uh, do your PCRs from a little bit bigger uh, sequence than just the CDS. So that's why we're going to get these adjacent sequences as well. So I've already translated the protein up here. And that's the, that is the translation of this CDS. Uh, but let me just show you real quick how to do that in case you don't already have that information. So copy your CDS, then go into your favorite sequence editor. I'm using APE. Paste it in, and on this tool you go ORF translate, and then that is that protein sequence. So I'll go ahead and copy that, and then we can close that window. All right. So we're going to do, first of all, a BLAST-P to see if that protein is in the organism. So let's open up a new window and find BLAST-P. So here it is, BLAST-P, and we're going to paste that protein sequence in here. And you don't have to worry about spaces and numbers and such. It takes care of it. All right, and down here we have a place where we can specify the organism. So let's go back to our spreadsheet. We'll do this first one, Arcanobacterium. And we're just going to paste it in here, and it's going to pop things up. And we're going to select one of the options. There was only one option in this case, but sometimes you get many, and you just have to take your best guess as to which one to pick. All right, and then you click Blast. And so this will search just that one organism's proteins for ones homologous to your query. So it's not going to find an exact match, but it's presumably going to find something that is an ortholog that is evolutionarily related. So the first question we have when we get our hits is, did it actually find something? And it definitely found stuff, and the name of this gene sounds right. That is the same as what DXS is that's its protein name uh, but notice it says this Truparella pyogenes uh, it doesn't say Arcanobacterium so is this actually the same organism all sorts of weird things happen when you do this blast business and you just kind of have to look at it and figure out what the best thing to do is so I'm going to search for that those two organisms named next to each other and here we have a Wikipedia article saying that it was originally called Corny bacterium, then an Actomyces, then Arcanobacterium, okay. And now it's this, whatever that is. Uh, so this is just renaming of the organism, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so we have our hit here, and we can go ahead and go over to the protein sequence. So here is the protein sequence entry. And sometimes you get lucky when you do this and it'll have a link that says CDS. In this case it says gene, but we'll see what happens when we click this. Yeah, it's still giving us protein. Okay, so in this particular case, we don't have a direct link to the DNA sequence that encodes this. And because the codon usage is degenerate, right, there are many possible encodings. So we have to figure out what is actually in this organism if we're going to clone it out by PCR. So this is the protein sequence in the organism. We started with an E. coli sequence, we blast peed it, and now we have the sequence of the protein in the organism. So I'm going to copy this. And then what we need to do is find a DNA sequence that translates to exactly that. 
So we'll go back to our blast search window and we're going to go back all the way to the beginning here where we have this and I'm going to switch now over to a T blast N. So that means a translated uh, query against the nucleotide database. So you input a protein and it gives you back DNA hits. So we'll paste in our new sequence and then we blast it. Okay. So now I didn't blast specifically against the genome. You could do that and this would go a little faster. Um, but this way you're going to get all the different strains of it and it'll find the one that is exactly that. So this is just more likely to give you a result than if you targeted one specific genome. But since we're looking for an exact match here, um, it's not going to be confusing as to which one to pick. It's whatever's showing up as near 100%, if not 100%. Okay. Still searching. Still searching. Still searching. Okay, so it found stuff. It, that is our organism that it found. We've got a 99.84% identity. Why that's not 100%, I'm not sure, but that's as close as we're going to get. So we're going with it. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then we can see right here that it is hitting a genome sequence, right? And it's telling us here the region that it's hitting on the genome. And we can click that GenBank link to get to the GenBank data about that region of the genome. So we see here it's got a GTG startup here. Although notice it doesn't actually seem to be ending directly at a stop codon. So either we have a sequence that is too short or too long to exactly be the gene. Um, so one thing we're going to need to do is extend both ends and make sure we're getting the whole thing. And we'll also need to do that so that we can get those pre and post sequences. So we'll go up here to the top over here where it's changed the region shown. We see 65, 66, 55. So let's go back a little bit. So we'll put in a zero here. So we'll go back about 600 base pairs on the start of it. And then on the end of it, let's make that a nine so that we're going a little bit, about 400 base pairs past it. And then update. All right. So now, We've got a much bigger sequence in here, and we've got adjacent genes, so we probably got the whole thing. So we can now download this as a file. We want the complete record. We want a file. We want GenBank. Create the file. Create the file. And then open it up, and you can see there is that gene in the middle that's annotated. If you're unsure about what it is that is the sequence, um, you can always go back to where you were and then search for the sequence in there. Another thing you can do, so here we have our gene DXS. It starts at 601. You can look at these numbers and know where it is. Uh, but the safest way to do it is to note the protein sequence here that starts MILDS. And we can grab this sequence here that we think it is, and then go ORF translate. V-I-L-D-S, but because it's a GTG start, that's a V instead of a start methionine. So this looks right. So that is our CDS. So we're going to copy that CDS and paste it into our spreadsheet. And yes, it has it. 
And now we need to grab the pre and the post sequence. So the pre sequence is basically here going backwards about 200 base pairs. So 200 is right there, there. So that's the pre. And then the post would be over here at the end of it for 200 base pairs or so. Doesn't have to exactly be 200 base pairs, but I'm gonna do it that way anyway. Copy and paste. So note that your CDS should be starting in an ATG, GTD, or maybe even a TTG. Um, and it should be ending in a stop codon. So let's check that it ends in a stop codon. TAG, yeah, that's a stop codon. TAA, TGA, TAG are the three stop codons. Okay, and then the last bit here is we need to put in the accession number. So that is just this number right here. Let me paste that in. Okay, and we are done.